This is Joseph Z. I'm really glad you're joining me today. I'm about to introduce you to Mario Murillo. Now, I'm sure many of you already know who he is and what God is doing through him right now, but Mario is a modern day revivalist. He has like a prophetic, apostolic, evangelist anointing on him to break the back of darkness in America, to break the powers that are trying to cripple our children, to cripple us in the government, to cripple the purpose that God has for America. Remember, the devil hates America and he's after it. And uh, I'm going to do my very best to just ask Mario as many good questions as we can. And honestly, Mario carries such an anointing and an authority that I just believe a lot of people are going to want to see this. So please repost this right now. Please share this. Invite people to this very special broadcast. Uh, it, it's going to be powerful. So uh, would you please help me welcome the man of God, Mario Murillo. Mario, I'm so thrilled to have you here today. Um, you know, you are just a voice of uh, reformation, a voice that's leading a movement. And just having the ability to talk with you a little bit has been tremendous and, uh, and get to know you a little. I just want to say to you, welcome to Prophecy Live today. Well, this is great. I'm so glad to be here with you, Joseph. This is going to be a powerful show. And I've, <laughs> I've been waiting with anticipation for what we were going to talk about today. Oh man, me too. Thank you, Mario. I, you know, right out of the gate, you know, you and your wife, Michelle, have such an anointing to stand up against the powers of darkness. You, yes, you know, one of the things I'm, I've been noticing that God's been doing through you is stopping the agenda of the devil. The devil right. wants to destroy America and you, you're standing up against it and uh, meetings happening everywhere. Would you talk to us about that just a little? Well, we're destroying stereotypes uh, with on. everything else. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4 and 5, weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God of the tearing down of strongholds. Mm -hmm. You see, what people don't get is the political uh, is tied to the spiritual. It's yes. not about right and left anymore. It's about good and evil, and it's yes. about understanding how Satan has camouflaged evil so that yes. the church feels impeded and unable to uh, speak against it. And the thing is, I tell people all the time, I said, you know, when I was preaching against crystal meth and heroin, <laughs> yeah. I was, uh, I was, nobody accused me of being a pharmacist, see? <laughs> but when I started exposing the evil of the left and the politics of the Democrat party, all of a sudden I'm a politician. And they don't understand. There's literally no inconsistency in that at all. And yeah. you know who else doesn't care? The Holy Spirit. Come on. When we expose the evil of drugs or the evil of socialism or the evil of atheism, yep. the same miracle power flows and young people are saved. And they're Praise getting God. saved in record numbers. Matter of fact, I haven't seen this, Joseph, not even in the Jesus movement. What we're watching Is that right? now. Is that right? Amazing. Well, Mario, you, during, during the shutdowns, during all this stuff, I remember seeing you boldly going into California and saying, ah, how about we have some meetings? How about if we just decide to push back against the darkness? How about if we throw down and have some tent crusades? And it just took off. Can you talk about that, the miracles you've seen, what God's done through you? Yeah, you know, what happened is, is we had five tent crusades scheduled in California wow. along the infamous Highway 99, which has become <laughs> legendary. The infamous Highway 99 from Red Bluff down to uh, Bakersfield. So the, the governor himself took us in hand and wow. shut down our tent crusades. What a, so what a guy. I went home not knowing what to do. It was a new model for me. Mm -hmm. And and then I started studying Matthew seven and eight. I'll I'll do the condensed version. Come on, in Mario. Matthew, in Matthew seven, Jesus is talking about prayer and mm -hmm. talking about God your Father. Ask and you'll receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. Be, he said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more then? Well, then I read that through and didn't realize that Matthew seven and eight were the same sermon. It was not yes. disconnected at all. Wow. So at the bottom of the Mount of Olives where Jesus was preaching was a leper and he <laughs> could hear what Christ was preaching. That's why he broke the law 
by telling Jesus, getting close to him, when the lepers are not supposed to get near anybody, he got so close and he said, if you want to, you can heal me. And Jesus put his hand on him, thereby himself going against the Jewish restrictions with lepers. Praise and God. put his hand on him and said, be healed. And I, and I went to bed that night and all of a sudden, and you need to know this, Fresno, California is one of the most afflicted cities in North America. Okay. Fresno has at least 10,000 homeless people, some of the most violent gangs and, and the entire infrastructure is being affected. They don't, you know, and, and they're honest about it. We, so we were shut down and at three mm. o'clock in the morning, I wake up after a horrifying dream. And mm. in the dream, you talk about prophetic. In yeah. the dream, I saw the face of anguish, addiction, despair, wow. like I'd never seen. And it was a scary composite face. Okay. And that face looked at me and said, you know, that I knew this was a man from Fresno that I was having a dream about that I had wow. never met. Wow. And he said, if you want to, you can come and help us. Ah, like Macedonian call. Wow. And I woke up and called my crusade director and I said, we're going, we're going to Fresno. We're going to go wow. and we're going to put up the tent. We've got to find a site. Well, Granite Park is a beautiful site. It's a soccer field. And unusually for a park, it used to be city owned, but then it was taken over by an independent business and a family okay. owned it. We said, okay, don't think the lockdown's right. The city needs hope. And uh, we're asking you for permission to do a tent crusade. And we assumed they were gonna say, are you kidding? You want us to lose our license? You want us to this and that? Instead, they said, look, we're gonna wow. fight this with you. Come and bring your tent. So we brought the tent. We handed out thousands and thousands of cards, went into all of the homeless camps and everywhere. Oh, and we man. were thinking we're going to have nobody show up on Sunday night. We thought the churches really didn't back it because they were afraid, you know, it was illegal. So anyway, the first night, 1,200 people are in that tent. Every seat is gone and God begins to heal the sick. We didn't have them wear masks. We didn't social couldn't social distance or we wouldn't have gotten them in the building. And by the end of that <laughs> night, it was all over town. Wow. And we went four straight nights and I ended up in a Starbucks with my wife and the mayor of Fresno. <laughs> is that right? We're sitting there and I'm thinking, you know, this is, this is it. We're done. We're going to get, we're going to be arrested. He was a former chief police. Yeah. And he was a Christian man. And I told him, I said, young teenage drug addicts are getting saved. And wow. he had tears in his eyes. And he said, go for it. Come and, on. And it was that that began our, our tent crusades up and down Highway 99, right in the center of the pandemic. Mario, I got to, I, for our viewers, everyone who's watching right now, I, I have an uncanny sense of the presence of God right now while you're talking. Thank you, Jesus. Um, and there's a lot of times, and I, I, I'm just honoring that for this moment, Mario. When you're talking, there's, and I really honor you, sir. I really do. I, I just speak life over you and your ministry. I don't even know how to, I have so many things I want to talk about, but I feel the presence of God with this apostolic authority that you're carrying right now. And ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Mario, you're listening to Mario. And if you're not connected with him, you need to be. This man of God right here is carrying an authority that is very rare in this generation. And so, uh, you know, what, what the spirit of the Lord has brought on you, Mario, is, is to counter this weak need lie that we're supposed to submit to government over the gospel. This, right. this falsehood of the way they pervert Romans 13, you know, uh, and we could go into all that, but truly I believe revival is the answer that when you yes. bring enough, I like what you called it living proof to people that we can absolutely begin to see life happen. And so would you talk some more just about the miracles, the revival that God's called you to foster and, and honestly, just um, watch over and bring to the nation. Well, I think that it's very difficult to uh, say things 
with the proper giving of glory to God. Yeah. When you're involved in it, you want, mm. you want nothing. You, you don't want any association with it because it is so not me. Yes. Or is it anything that um, of my holiness? <laughs> so in our tent, people get out of wheelchairs and they walk. Come on. Blind eyes are open. Cancers vanish. People go back to their doctors and doctors are asking what is going on in that tent. And, and, and yet I, I have to laugh because in a way it's such a stereotype. It's almost like <laughs> God has gone out of his way to embarrass the, the, the flesh. And, and, you know, the Bible said he's chosen the foolish things that confound the wise. Yeah. And here it's like a 1950s tent crusade where God <laughs> is healing the sick. Come is on. The weapon God is using to reach the young university students and people that are lost, gang members. And, <laughs> I, and love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. And to me, I got to tell you, Joseph, and this is my private confession. It okay. takes just every, between us. <laughs> yes. It takes every bit of my strength to agree to be inside of a dead church speaking. Yeah. Come on. To me, I just as soon take a flamethrower to the building. <laughs> what, what I'm what I'm experiencing inside of that tent, it just makes it unbearable to leave. Yes. And the yes. things that we have seen, you know, and then the we are we outgrew our eight thousand square foot tent. And so we got a twelve thousand square foot tent. Come on. We outgrew that. And so in Hanford, which is you know, uh, between Fresno and, and Bakersfield, we bought a 19,000 square foot tent. <laughs> and I thought, now I have totally lost my mind. Then the temperatures <laughs> dropped into the high 30s. And wow. we, were, we were having a meeting and I'm thinking in Hanford, what are we going to see? And we had every seat inside of that tent, maybe close to 3,000 chairs inside wow all filled and almost a thousand outside that were sitting in the cold. Mario, I, I got to tell you, you know, there's this whole talk about reformation. All, but everybody's yes. saying this and it seems like there's a catchphrase for everything. And yet it really is happening. There's a reformation and I believe God is using you. I, there's people like you, but really Mario, I just believe personally, you are leading the charge to bring revival to America. Wow. And, and in that capacity, I believe reformers are anointed to breathe life into the institutions, breathe life back into the church. But it usually comes through offense, not intentional offense, but that offense is so that, you know, God will offend our mind to reveal our heart. And I believe what you're doing, the miracles will be irrefutable, but there's such a presence that you carry. And how do you see the churches responding? Do you, do you see churches responding and uh, responding to what's going on even politically? Do you see that happening with, with what you're doing? I think the danger of the hour we're in, Joseph, is that the sheep and the people in the pew are way ahead of the pulpit. They're far I agree. more open and more zealous. They're I agree. Ready. I, you know, if what I'm sensing and the, the rumble in people's hearts and the way they're responding right now, yes. there is an incredible surge. You know, uh, we're doing an event at Oral Roberts University in the maybe so. Yeah. so yeah, come on. And I, I'm only mentioning this as an example. It's really not to advertise it so much as to say, here is an indication. We have yeah. 6,200 people registered for that event yes. because they know that we're going to do two things that haven't really ever been done together. One is we're gonna stand up for America. We're Come on. Stand up against the agenda. And yep. I'm going to preach the gospel and pray for the sick all at the same time. So we're leaving no stone unturned. But the groundswell, the, the groundswell of the people, you see, the pulpits tend to have an issue with that. They don't want politics mentioned in the pulpit. Right. They want to comment on that in a moment. Please. And they don't want it mentioned. And they think that by not mentioning it, they're going to preserve whatever little they have left as a congregation. But yep. what they don't understand is that the Holy Spirit and the people of God recognize the evil that's in the land and they yes. recognize what's at stake, you know, and all of a sudden, the minute that a, a spirit filled soccer mom realizes 
that her child is going to be programmed to yep. believe in immorality, to right. believe in racism, and to believe mm-hmm. in things that are anti-God, uh, that's, that's when it's over. It's over because yeah. that energy and that revolution is coming. The only thing it's been missing is what I call direct action. And, mm-hmm. uh, and I, I mean this, that I believe that for years, the church has been crippled by indirect virtual reality. In other words, take intercession for one example. Please we pray for God to move. We ask God to move, but we never act as if he's going to. So we'll have <laughs> events that go on for days and focus only on prayer. And imagine this prayer. Uh, Jesus said, the harvest is white and the, la- the great and the labors are few. Pray the Lord of the harvest that he will send labors into the harvest. Come on, yes. The end of that prayer, Joseph, is action. And that's what's been missing. It wasn't until the direct act of, of Martin Luther nailing those theses to the Wittenberg door. That's right. The Protestant revolution and reformation was started. It was when direct action is taken. And, it, and we God. can pray all we want, but if we don't obey and we don't ask God, what do we do? What do you want uh, us to do? That's because it. Faith without works. Yep. Faith without works, Mario. That's right. Yeah. And, um, and anyway, I want to say one more thing, and I'm sorry, I'm, I, I don't want to dominate the conversation. Mario, I, this program is yours right now. Well, you just say brother, what you want. <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're hitting all the hot buttons is what you're doing, <laughs> brother. But yeah. the, the, one of the hottest buttons is this one, is the idea that it's about politics. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm working on a blog right now entitled, How Can You Still Call It Politics? Yeah. Someone asked me, what is the mood of America? I said, what is the mood of America? I'm going to tell you, it's in the eyes of that supreme female athlete that lost to a man because she had trained all of her life. She yes. even broke her own record. She yep. set a record in that race against that man. Mm-hmm. And when you see her trying as against all of her emotions to stand on that victory podium, getting second place when she knows full well that it's just been robbed from her. That's That's the root of America. That that is wokeness personified is right there. I think 45 had a good quote about what happens when things go woke, but that's very good what you're saying. Yep. And, uh, And so now we're faced with the fact that it's evil. See, it's yep. not right, left. And, and, you know, when you use the paradigm, and the model of good and evil, then all of a sudden it isn't Republican versus Democrats. There's a lot of Republicans that I don't have any use for. I think they're liars and hypocrites. And I think they're, <laughs> they're looking out for their own personal uh, self-preservation. Come on. Knowing that they can stop evil. And yes. now we got someone running... Uh, uh, Con, to be confirmed, the Supreme Court that says she doesn't know what a woman is. I know it. In the she's month. not a biologist. Yeah, and this is what National Women's Month, and and I'm thinking, what an incredible moment for the church to wake up. And how silly do you look when you're remaining silent in the face of this kind of perversion? Wow, Mario, I, I want to promote the Maybe Center event just for a moment, if I could. Um, in you. April, I believe it's going to be 21 or 2021. Is that correct? It's 21 the, and 22. Thursday, 21 and 22. Friday. Uh, it's going to be twofold. There's so much going on there, but you're going to be doing, you've invited Flashpoint to be there the first night. And of course, we're going to be there with you. Oh, the, you're going to be doing it live. Yeah, and, it's going to be Hank Kuhneman. Lance Walnow, Gene, and myself. Wow. And uh, we're going to have a special guest. We're waiting for it to be totally confirmed. Come on. Uh, and we're, we've got 6,200 people registered, and we still got wow. a, a few weeks to go. And then on Friday night, we're doing a miracle service. And you got to yeah. realize, I don't do miracle services except in a tent. And then someone told me, do you realize that the Maybe Center is designed after Oral Roberts' tent. I wow. said I didn't know it. It's it's a Man. it's a replica of his tent. It's a <laughs> layout and design. And I thought, well, see that there's something going on. And we give God the glory. It's not we about give God me. the glory. 
I, I don't I don't fancy myself as any kind of uh, of healer. It is Christ who is the healer. Man, Mario, I, I got to tell you, we and our team are coming. We can't wait to be there with you. Wonderful. Um, and, and, oh, man, we're coming. And anybody who's watching this right now, you need to, uh, and we're going to keep talking here, but how, how can they register for the Maybe Center, the event at the Maybe Center? They just, where should they well, go? You know what? Uh, they don't need to register because what, okay. they, what they did is they wanted, they said it this way. Let us know if you are coming so we'll know how many to prepare for. <laughs> so what it is, is there's three configurations you can do with the Maybe Center. You can make it a 3,000 seat, you can make it a 6,000 seat, or you can go out to several thousand. Man. Well, now we've opened it up entirely. So everybody <laughs> come, get there early. Uh, it's going to be an amazing event. Amazing. Well, Brother Hank prophesied something about the Maybe Center, that this is going to be a very pivotal moment. There's something happening around this. And so I just, I want to say uh, to all of our viewers and everybody who's watching right now, I got to tell you, I don't often feel the Holy Ghost this strong when I'm talking to individuals. But I, I want to tell you, if you can get to the Maybe Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma, April 21st and 22nd, you really want to get there. Don't miss Flashpoint Live. Mario is doing this event. He's invited Flashpoint to be there. And then he's going to do a miracle service the following day. You don't want to miss this. I'm telling you, if you can humanly make this event, you want to be there. This is a once in a lifetime historical moment, I believe. I believe God's going to do something very profound uh, in the hearts and minds of the church, in people that are unbelievers. And I believe a shout is going to be heard from the camp of the righteous uh, to push back the darkness in this nation. So Mario, Amen. thank you for doing that event, man. Thank you, Joseph, for sharing all that. And what you said, you couldn't have said it any better. It's, there's a shout going to be heard. We're going to yes. push back the darkness and we're going to challenge the mm. forces of evil and Come expose on. them in Jesus name. Yes, we yeah. are. Praise Amen. God. Well, well, there's there's a number of events you have going. I know we're also talking about uh, in Colorado Springs, you have another event going and we'll get back to some topics here in a moment. But July, it's 10th, 11th, 12th and 13th in Colorado Springs. Right. Uh, can you tell us about that just a little bit? Well, Radiant Church, which has four mm -hmm. campuses in Colorado Springs, is, awesome. is, is going to be the fountainhead. And they're bringing all of the leaders and pastors together. The, the event that I want to focus that is that at Radiant Church, we're going to have uh, a brunch on Saturday, June the 4th. Wonderful. And, uh, they'll be able to register for that at our website. We're, and also, brother, upstate New York. We're, we're doing a crusade in Batavia, New York, between Batavia and Racha. And the, that one is going to explode. And Tell us about not, that, please. Yeah, well, we went there last year. And okay. when we went there last year, uh, we put up our 12,000 square foot tent and thinking, yeah. okay, let's pray God will fill this. Then I had the worst thing that could happen to an evangelist. The rain came, the rain. <laughs> yeah. And we were there in October and it rained for 24 hours solid, didn't wow. stop. Wow. So two hours before start time, I drove from my hotel, which was a half hour away to the tent to speak to our, to lift the morale of our meager little core that was gonna be in there. <laughs> and, and when I got within a mile, I was in for the shock of my life. It looked like the closing scene of Field of Dreams. There were headlights <laughs> everywhere and they were wow. backed up in all directions. We ended up with 4,000 people standing in the rain. Praise God. And then it rained the next night and they still came back. In fact, here they were, many of them standing outside under umbrellas, huddling together to hear the word of God. And then it, the next night, it kept raining for 48 hours. The next night, there was an even bigger crowd on a Monday night, even though they knew they were going to end up not all getting in. They still came. Wow. So we're coming this time with a much bigger tent. And we're, we're doing it. And that's going to be uh, a, actually on Saturday, the 9th of April. We're going to do okay. a brunch there at Cornerstone Church. 
And Praise it, God. All of this is available at our website to hear about it. So, And what is your website, just so we say it? It's just mariomarillo.org. Okay, Mar wonderful. Thank and you. Uh, you can see that information on the screen, mariomarillo.org. Please, ladies and gentlemen, um, those of you that are watching, if you're in New York, if you're in any of these areas, Colorado Springs, of course, Tulsa. And if you're anywhere in the nation, you have no excuse to not to get to Tulsa uh, for the Maybe Center event. The reason I'm saying this is um, I, I, I can't think of another ministry on the planet I want to endorse or get behind more than Mario Murillo. And what God is doing through this man of God, through this, this movement that the Lord has placed upon him as a responsibility to steward. I just want to say to everybody watching, any way you can stand with Mario, any way you can get behind him, we are, our ministry is going to be at, at every one of these events we can get to, because I just believe in what's happening with you. So Mario, um, with what's going on in the, this reformation we're beginning to see and what's going on around the world, um, how should pastors respond? If you could speak to leaders and then, of course, believers right now, what would you say to them to move them forward? You know, uh, I would say this it, in Proverbs 24, 24. So in Proverbs 24, verse 24 and 25 is a real powerful word. Mm -hmm. It says that the person who rebukes the wicked will be blessed. Come on. Greatly blessed. And, and uh, that their, 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 uh, their destiny will be secured. It's a powerful verse. Now, mm. and the other thing is, is that I would say to you, whatever demon told you not to speak out against the issues, the yeah. issues of evil that are going on right now in our nation, Whatever devil told you to do that, rebuke it right now, because your silence Amen. is your worst enemy. And Amen. That's why Mordecai said to Esther, if you remain silent, then disaster is going to come to you, but not to the nation. Here's the interesting thing. I would say to the pastor, this is how bad it is if you remain quiet. God is going to save America. Yes. With you or without you. But if he doesn't do it with you, then you and your house are going to suffer. The wow. churches that refuse to take a moral stand. And I ask God, how is that going to happen? Yeah. How, how will that judgment, what'll, what'll it look like? And I'm going to tell you what it looks like. Your people are going to come up to a very terrible conclusion about you. You mm -hmm. see, they're go, they go to work and they're persecuted for being Christian. They go, their child is being uh, dismissed from school and uh, because they're, they're wearing a Christian t-shirt. Yeah. You're watching parents and children suffer right now like yes. never before because of the, their faith and because of wokeness. Mm -hmm. And they go to church and you're not equipping them to face that world. You're not showing yeah. them how. Yeah. By remaining silent, this is the message you're sending. Yeah. You don't care about them. Wow. And the worst thing that could happen to any pastor and any church is for the people to start believing that you don't care about what they're actually going through. And mm. they're going through it. On the other hand, the people who are speaking out and that are speaking up are suddenly being blessed. Yeah. And then they, and the idea of Romans 13 that you brought up is a joke because yeah. The it Bible is. says he sets up kings and tears them down. How does that happen? Look at me. Huh? Audience, look at me. How does God set up a king and then tear him down when he ceases to fulfill God's purposes? Mm. So now here's what happens. When you look at Romans 13, it's talking about a king that God set up. Yeah. You know that God moved the heart of Cyrus. We saw Trump elected by a miracle. Yeah. A miracle that we could partially take credit for, but not really. Yep. But here is verse 3 of Romans 13. It says it all. Come it on, says Mario. that the authorities that are of God are not a threat to the righteous. Yep. So if they are a threat, if they're trying to shut down the church, they are not an authority we're supposed to obey. That's and right. watch this. The Bible talks about good and evil. In Psalm 94, it says you will have no fellowship with those who devise evil by law. 
Mm. So when someone creates an evil law, which abortion is an evil law, it's the wicked. The destruction of marriage between a, a man and a woman is an evil law. It's the evil. The cancel culture and the censorship, they're all evil laws. That's the right. The Bible says God is not in it. And when a pastor yeah. gets up and preaches, well, we're supposed to surrender and remain quiet and not do anything. We're going against the Bible. And, we're, and, and how convenient is it to a cowardly man to look at Romans 13 and let it be the camouflage when the real issue is self-preservation? That's, That's correct. I agree with you completely, Mario. It's self-preservation. People care more about it. It's, it's almost like it's a, it's a, it's a mirage for the, bo the body of Christ because they think by self-preservation, their bank accounts will stay full. They will have bigger churches, better things. It's almost like what William Wallace said. Oh, yeah, you can flee and you'll, you'll live at least for a while. You'll have freedom for a while. But then many years from now, right, he goes into the speech. The point yeah. I'm trying to make is God will give you everything you never knew you even wanted if you will line up with him. And you will begin to do what Mario's talking about and begin to lunge forward in boldness and a spirit of faith, a Joshua Caleb anointing. Uh, Mario, what you're talking about is so potent that that's the reason there's so much apathy, even in young people and so many. And we do Absolutely. many conferences ourselves. And the, the issue at hand is that nobody is really pushing this to the level they need to. And I'm not, I shouldn't say nobody, but many are not. And if they would get into the position you're in, I think we would see such a revival we've, like we've never seen before. God is already wanting to do this. Right. And what, what, you're, what you're talking about, Mario, I, I don't even know how to articulate this because I'm a little overwhelmed at the moment by the presence of God. I really am. I actually, when I feel the sense of almost tears coming up in me just by being with someone, it's because of the potency of the presence of God they carry. Yeah. And what you're bringing forward oh, is going to break the yoke off a generation. We're going to bust the yoke off a generation. We're going to save those staggering off the slaughter. Um, I, I, man. Well, you Mar know. We need to okay. do whatever we can to help you, Mario. Yeah. Well, listen, you, you've been an amazing help. I just want to look at. And, and what do we say to our youth? What do we say to our youth today? How do we address them? Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing that we have to understand is that history is significant. That's why yeah. the devil is erasing American history because right. in our history, you'll find what you're supposed to do. It'll be as clear as a bell. You know, right. I was at Berkeley for 10 years in the mm. most potent youth revolution of all time in American history was the anti-war yeah. movement. There were 40,000 university students at Berkeley and they changed the world. They uh -huh. changed the way we thought, the way we spoke and even the way we ate. And they wow. forced the war to end and they threw a president out of office. Now here is the interesting thing. Everything they are for and were for in the 70s youth uh, revolution, woke is against. They were Amazing. for free speech. Woke Amazing. is against it. Right. They were for racial equality. And woke is against racial equality. Somebody Correct. is going to manifest now that I said that. But it's absolutely <laughs> true. Yeah, come out of them. You see, CRT, critical race theory, is uh -huh. an example of how Satan got desperate and realized that his favorite tool to divide a nation was about to go away. It's called wow. racism. Mm -hmm. There was equality in America. There, minorities were doing well. They were advancing. Families were being structured. When yeah. all of a sudden, I, I know that corrupt politicians running the plantation, running the, as Dinesh D'Souza has so eloquently exposed the yeah. roots of the Democratic Party and holding down Black people, then it suddenly became very clear to the devil that they were being emancipated economically, mm -hmm. educationally. So he had to do something. So he yes. flipped it, said, okay, at one point, America thought the color black was evil. Now I want him to think the color white is evil. Right. And the fact is, either way it goes, the devil laughs because he's, he's looking at our our uh, impetuous, immature, uh, short-term thinking. And he's going, you know what? The mechanism lives on. 
The yeah. mechanism lives on. It lives and on. This is why we're going to destroy it by the power yes, of God. Yes, we are. Come and here's on. the tipping point. Young people need to realize what a freedom fighter is. When I was at Berkeley, communism was at its apex. Marxism yeah. controlled the university. Then God began to heal the sick. I began preaching to the students and they began getting saved when they realized that it was in Christ yep. that the justice they were seeking is finally found. Yeah. And I, I began to say things and I don't want, you know, sometimes I have to be careful not to reduce complicated issues to simple, simplistic <laughs> phrases. But how can you say you're honest about women's rights if you're going to leave Jesus out of the talk? How can you yeah. say you're honest about race if you're going to leave Jesus out of it? The gospel is the single greatest force for women's rights and racial equality, because when you are born again, not only do you believe in racial equality, you don't even notice what someone's color is. Mm. All you know is that they are your family. So the power of True. this hour is the tipping point. When youth suddenly realize that everything the left has told them is a blatant lie, that the ideology itself is corrupt to the core and that the justice they're seeking and the equality thereafter and the helping of the poor and, and the homeless is tied to Christ. That's wow. gonna be when the devil will pack up and leave and our nation will be reformed. And I believe we're at that tipping point right now. What, what a profound uh, statement you just made. Well, several profound statements. And really what you're talking about, the power of God, it answers the fight inside. And people don't know how to solve that fight inside. Yes. And you're, you're answering it, Mario. You know, um, while well, we still have a chance to, many of you may not know this, Mario has a new book coming out and it's called Do Not Leave Quietly. Uh, it's, you can pre-order it right now. I highly recommend you do, uh, that you pre-order it, that you get a hold of this. Mario's got several books that are out and I just highly recommend it. Lance Walno has written the foreword. Uh, it's just a tremendous, tremendous book. You can't get it today, but you can pre-order it. Uh, I highly encourage you to do so. Uh, this is a great publishing company. Uh, Mario's just got several such a great voice and um, man of God, I am, um, I believe that we are headed for a, a tremendous uh, opportunity in the 2022 midterms. Do you have any thoughts about where that's headed? Well, I believe that we need to turn up the heat Come on. On, the, on the leaders of the Christian movement in America. We yeah. need to turn up the heat. First, we need a miracle to expose that the election was stolen and that there is a mechanism in place to keep our elections from being fair and accurate. So yeah. we need a miracle because what yes. the devil's gonna use on the Christian is they're gonna say, well, does my vote even matter? And here's what I use as an analogy. I use this as an analogy. When Mary Magdalene felt led of God on Easter morning to go to the tomb, the question she had in her mind was who will roll away the stone? She wanted to bring oils and perfume to the body of Christ who was laying in the grave. And she thought, how am I going to roll away the stone? But yeah. the stone had already been rolled away. She <laughs> didn't let the lack of knowledge that a miracle had already taken place to stop her. That's why I'm telling everybody, get ready to go to the polls. Get, get ready. ready, register to vote. Even yep. before we have the miracle to expose the corruption in the election process, by yes. the time it comes time to vote, a miracle will have taken place. So I tell everyone to prepare for the midterms and to realize that even in California, in Colorado, and in New York, there's going to be a shock. There's going to be a <laughs> shock because of the way that people are starting to feel about how their children are being treated. Yes. So I do believe that we're gonna see something in the midterm elections and can't let anything stop us. I believe it's gonna be the micro wins, meaning victories, not like wind that blows along the air, but I'm talking micro victories or micro wins that accumulate into a roar. And yes. I think that roar is going to induce change. I think it's the shout of the king in the camp of the righteous. 
And it's just such a tremendous scenario when many people come together. And that's really what God's using you for, Mario, and uh, your tremendous team and so many people that are coming together. You are um, you're inducing real change. People talk about it. It's actually coming through uh, your ministry. And so, Mario, how, how can people partner with you? I know we said MarioMarillo.org. Is that how people can partner with you? You know, if, if, if I could just take a prayer offering and okay. tell everyone watching, pray for us. Okay. Because the doors that are about to open, I can't even talk about them. They're so big. Wow. And, and it's going to impact millions and millions of Americans. And I Thank need you, prayer. Jesus. Whatever okay. the Lord does beyond that, just go to mariomarilla.org and let it be a window into what we're doing. And then the Holy Spirit will guide you however you're supposed to be a part of it. And I, but, and I thank you for whatever the Lord leads people to do. I love it. Well, right now in Jesus name, we not only are going to partner with you, Mario, but we speak this audience and I, all of us together, we speak a blessing over you. I speak divine protection over you, man of God. I come into agreement for physical sustaining power to take you farther, to continue to bring you rest, to continue to bring you strength. And God, we thank you for Mario Marillo. We thank you for the ministry that you've brought through he and his wife and what they're accomplishing on a global scale. The eyes of the world are watching. And Lord, I thank you that the, both the world and the church deserve to see mature believers bringing the full display of Jesus to the scene. I just, Lord, I come into agreement with the man of God and we release strength favor and no good thing do you withhold to them who walk uprightly. Uh, Mario, I bless you and I'm so grateful for you. Um, you know, before we wrap up here today, do you have a closing word for us? Anything you'd want to share, please? God raised up America by a miracle and the mm. devil is a fool to believe that he has the power to take this nation down. God <laughs> will not let America go without a fight. And that fight is going to be a fierce, fearsome firestorm of God's intervention. Wow. Amen. Wow. Amen. Mario, I'm so honored you're here today. Uh, anytime you want to come back on, you have a standing invitation to be here. Um, please, uh, please come back and see us soon. Oh, I'd love and, to. Uh, I'd love to. I'd love to. We're going to, we're in this together, brother. We're in this. We together. are. We are. Well, MarioMarillo.org, check him out. Stand with the man of God. And everybody who's watching, remember Jesus is Lord. We're going red in the blood of Jesus today. And Mario, thank you so much for being here. God bless and bye everyone. Have a great, thank great day. Well, I am so glad you joined us today. You know, we have a lot happening in this ministry and it's because of monthly partners that helps us continue reaching people by the millions. Currently, we have a project and it's called the Diamond Air 62 Project. Affectionately, we call it the Red Eagle One Campaign. This aircraft can take up to seven people. We can travel anywhere in the nation and as mandates get stricter and the times get more and more difficult, we believe we will have our own ability to travel and be a blessing to people all over at no cost to them. I encourage you to become a partner today. You can do that by going to josephz.com or you can text the keyword GIVE to 719-259-0029. If you partner today, you're going to find that there is a great partner care in our ministry that will reach out to you. They will love you. Different team members will be contacting you. They'll pray with you. They will prophesy to you. They're just going to love on you. And I got to tell you, our partner care is wonderful. These guys love you and they're looking forward to talking to you. Another thing I want to say to you is please consider signing up for our email list. You want to sign up so we can stay in contact because we're building new platforms all the time. If the social media becomes more stringent or difficult or maybe you just can't find us, if you sign up for our email list, it'll be a tremendous blessing for you and for us and we can stay in touch and you can find where we are all the time. Thank you so much for watching today. Jesus is Lord and I want to say a great thank you to the partners and friends of this ministry. Together, I think we can change the world.